I am an anvil of words. I don't know how not to be dense, especially when I'm hard. Propriety barely stops me when my gutter mind overflows. Every woman I see is an atom smasher to me, releasing atomic energy. My mushroom head cloud guided heat seeking missile hearkening back to the ancient songs of my people. Breed, 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 die. And people wonder why sex and death are so always intertwined. Because at one time, that's what we were built to do. And our DNA hasn't forgotten. Thank you. I am Azrael Johnson, director of Writing Nights Press. This is the Hessler Street Fair Poetry Anthology Reading. Welcome. Woo! Give yourselves a round of applause. So hopefully you all either got my message or have a copy of this handy dandy notebook. Um, if you do not yet have a copy, we are selling the contributor copies today. If you want additional copies, um, uh, she is, uh, Suzanne from Maxbacks is taking your information and I will mail them out tomorrow. There was a mailing snafu and we'll, we'll work it out anyway. You'll, you'll get your copies. Um, before we start with the program itself, I want to introduce our three judges. Christine Howey, last year, one of last year's co-winners. Aurora Stone Melman, current writing and storytelling champion. And Daria Quinn, uh, one of the first two sword fight com competitors in uh, Ready Night's upcoming event on July 13th. Um, and before we, also before we start up with other things, we're gonna bring up Suzanne to talk about the Hessler Street Fair. Tonight. So, um, the Hester Street Fair and Writing Nights and Max Bax sponsors this event and this reading. Uh, the Hester Street Fair has been going on for almost 50 years. Um, it's Woo! next weekend, uh, June 2nd and 3rd, right around the corner here on Hester Street from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. both nights. It's a, it's a blast. There's all kinds of things to do for you and your family. There's artist booths, there's nonprofit booths talking about things that are important, there's great food trucks, and there's live music. Plus, the winners here tonight will be um, reading poetry on um, the Sunday at the street fair. So hang out, go on down there. When you when you stop with the Hester Street Fair Poetry booth, then um, tell them thank you for sponsoring this, and have fun tonight. Thanks. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Uh, Max Bax has been super supportive with the poetry scene as a whole, especially writing notes. Um, to get this kicked off, we're going to accept volunteers. So if you would like to get your poem performed sooner rather than later, we will give you an opportunity to volunteer. And if that is not the case, then we will start from the beginning of the table of contents and move on the way down. So there's a lot more impending dread that way. So. Do we have any volunteers? Please welcome Cy Castells. Hello, my name is Cy, and I'm a little taller than Azriel. This is called Gender Confirmation. This was not a confirmation, this was a justification. Because your brain cannot trust itself. It needs external sensory proof to tell the solid truth from lies. And it tries. It tries so hard to find some sign that it is not wrong. So I will reach out my hand and hand it a stick and say, this is my penis. 
I will tap on its palm and say, this is my heart. And I will guide its finger across my skin saying, and this is my soul. Because it needs to touch something. It cannot believe in a thing that can't be touched. So it needs a name to have a sound, and it needs a man to have a name, and it needs a wound to leave a scar, and it needs a grief to be bound to a grave. I did this to my body now so that my childhood brain and all its wicked, confounded thoughts can look forward and feel justified in saying, that is me. Thank you. Thank you, Cy. Um, oh, uh, any of you uh, social media ites who would like to share the Hessler reading? It is currently live streaming Facebook Live on the Writing Nights Facebook page. That's Facebook.com slash Writing Nights. So if you want to just share the live stream to get more people watching, that'd be cool. Um, we have any other volunteers? I don't know your name. Come on up. <laughs> Please welcome this person. Woo! 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 Please tell us your name. Hello. Hello. My name's Jeremy. Which one? Uh, Juice Act, Family Practice. The dentist always ignores the words etched into my jaw. But today my checkup is with the doctor. Today I was plastic, a chair in the lobby. The gum under the seat is dirtier than me. I wash my hands. In 207 I became a stool with a wrinkled cushion. The faded composite cracks underneath, divots from fingernails pressing from white knuckled patients. Today, Dr. Liu missed the rhythm in my heart. I drive away from the office, and real life returns to focus. I can again look for a five-leaf clover and drink coffee from a mug. One may find both hidden in the uncut grass. These leaves of grass obscure skeletons. My color comes back when I hit the brakes for turkeys crossing the road. And when I see a buzzard ripping the intestines from a squirrel smeared flat, my pulse finally returns. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. It's good to see people for the first time when you don't know them previously. Any other volunteers? Don't all run at once. She is so glad she asked his name. 
a friendship has been made. God's work is now done. Thank you. And his name is Cole. Thank you, Karen. Next volunteer. Come on up. did her best in Amish role of MD. The palsy dropped your feet and your speech. The first twin does all the talking, nervously narrating his day, leading the giant dark brown horse out the barn. Happily satisfied with your lives, you don't know any different. You get your fill of all the Cheerios the English's trip to the Walmart can hold in your blue bowls to match the sky, to match your sister Anna's blue glass collection she's saving on the windowsills. As sun streams in, no blinds, until her young Amish man chooses her as his wife. Then she'll gather up her shiny blue glass collection and two dresses, three if you count the wedding dress, and move across the street. Thank you, Joanne. Next volunteer, Mr. Landis, Mr. Jeffrey Landis. So, now that we've started, uh, I should mention to start with that a villanelle is a particular rhymed. Uh, form that has repeating lines. One day, Mary and I were going to go off to the, uh, what's now called the Cy Dostal Memorial Poetry Workshop, so we were going off, and I got home from work, and we were about to go to the workshop, and Mary met me at the door and said, I'm in the middle of a villanelle, and I don't think it's going very well. And I said, I can work with that. <laughs> a villanelle. I'm in the middle of a villanelle. It should be saucy, short and sweet, but it's not going very well. Trying to write giving me hell. What words will make my thoughts complete? I'm in the middle of a villanelle. It's prying a pearl from an oyster shell to find a line I can repeat, and I don't think it's going well. Will it be classic? I just can't tell. I just won't know till it's complete. I'm in the middle of a villanelle. I don't care if it's good, I just want it to sell if I have to hawk it on the street. But I think it's going not so well. The poem should ring like a carillon bell. It should be good enough to eat. I'm in the middle of a villanelle, and I don't think it's going very well. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Jeff Green. Next volunteer, Miss Anita Keys.
Now you've found some new truth. You can't see anything else. It's opened up your old wounds, shaken what you thought you knew. It's much too much to go through, to go through all by yourself. Some new truth. All the things I couldn't see, the secrets that I never knew, made you lose your faith in me, and baby, now I lost it too. Now you found your new truth. I can't see anything else. It's blocking all my old views, changing what I thought I knew. It's much too much to go through, and now you're somebody else. Someone who is blaming me for something that I never knew. Stranded in this space between us. What am I supposed to do now you've found your new truth? Your new truth changes everything. It changes everything. Thank you, Anita. Who's next? Whoever's next is next. Person in the corner, I can't see. Welcome in. I'm Rob Smith. Uh, before I read my poem, I have to give you a crash course in entomology 101. <laughs> How many of you um, know about aphids? You know, it's really important. They That's bug good. me. They bug you? Oh. <laughs> well, so I, I introduced the poem with this full description of aphids for those of you who don't know about insects, insects that suck. <laughs> <laughs> Aphids are sucking insects that feed on the sap of plants and secrete a substance called honeydew. This sticky resin is a favorite food of ants who actually milk the aphids. This relationship is symbiotic, both receiving benefit from the arrangement. The aphids provide food for the ants and the ants protect the aphids from predators like lace wings and ladybugs. Now you know everything you need to know to know this poem. The whole world exists under a leaf on my windowsill. It's where aphids live all clustered together in quiet desperation. Fear makes them restless as they toss, toss in troubled sleep. Mostly they worry that the ants will soon return through a hole in the screen. When they do, they come like pickpockets, deftly touching and stroking swollen abdomens, drawing out the honeydew. Ants are their enemies, all oh, hands and legs, moving so nimbly, all while smelling of formic acid and looking so alien. The aphids bear up by counting small blessings and crediting their prayers for delivering them from the lace wings and ladybugs. They pray only for peace. Peace from the visitation of the marauding ants. They pray only for peace. Peace in their world on the underside of a leaf. Thank you, Rob. Next volunteer. I volunteer as tribute. All right, please welcome uh, Rachel Hayes. Wait, are we going to fight to the death? I didn't know that was going to be Well, Rachel will win for sparkly footwear. <laughs> do you need a copy I of the book? do need a copy of the book. I have not looked at this since I wrote it. And forgive me because I was in a rather depressed state of mind when I wrote this. No forgiveness, me. Thank you. Okay. The seed was planted long ago, a pit in muddied earth, in which was toppled a cursed corpse to feed the fertile soil. 
Child-sized, the monster stretched all tentacles and talons till it consumed the plot in pulsing rot, flight without foil. On and outward charged the spread, a net of icy venom, and petrified the ground in sticky pitch black apathy. It branched into a slew of hosts, each tainted in their place, dissolved their innards, then twisted their brains too far to free. In sickened, spread, and choked the globe, unwitting branches waving, infested all that breathed and lived and loved along the way. It sits unchallenged on its throne, one writhing, untamed mass, roiling and festering in place. The battle's won, and all's decay. Whoever's next is next. Who's up? Volunteer persons? Volunteering to Ross Hayes, come on up. So as you can tell, uh, I'm actually from France. Hello everyone. Um, so this poem is about words, which is the most pretentious thing you can write a poem about, but let's go for it. Can everyone hear me okay, by the way? I know I mumble. If I need to like speak up, just shout at me. Here we go. Do you think it's mere coincidence that dragons and kitchens have scales? Do you think it's only happenstance there's pods of peas and whales? Why is it that both people and fruit come together in a pair? Could a gust of wind take the throne? After all, he's the air. If you play a bass guitar, are you playing with a fish? If you have a single tear for new paper, do you wish? We have so many words in this vocabulary of ours. If you tried to say them all, it would take days, not mere hours. So why are there so many words that we use multiple times? Was it merely to make sure our poetry all rhymes? <laughs> I cannot buy this tongue of ours. It causes me such pain. I think I'll start a protest. I think I will refrain to use any word that would have more than one meaning. I'll replace them with another, one of my own dreaming. I'll use the word blaris when referring to outer space and keep that word exclusive for the gaps within this place. When I lock the door, I use a nilt instead of a key. That's reserved for the music world when going from A to G. You better talk of bikes and cars when you use the word gears. Elsewise, why not say kenjis and remove confusion fears? That's more like it, don't you think? There's no more going wrong. No more multiple meanings. From now, there's only one. And perhaps it's time to clear things up. It's time to clarify. Did the title of this poem make you wonder why it was the made-up word Garnock that I used? No doubt when you first saw it, you might have been confused. Hopefully now you know why. It's an elegant solution. After all, I can hardly call this the homonym revolution. <laughs> All right, are you ready, person? I don't know. Come on up. Welcome. Woo. It's called Sanctuary, and we all hear a lot about Sanctuary and DACA. Sanctuary. White Steeple Church provides sanctuary even to nesting birds, yet not for all. A predator lurks, stalking, killing, gulls mostly, leaving behind a bird foot or bloody feathers, and once, two wings connected by a bit of sinew, somehow appropriate, looking like angel's wings. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Next volunteer, this guy right here. I don't know you. My name's 
uh, Jeremy Kroll. My friends call me JP, so please call me JP. <laughs> you can raise the mic stand if you want. You don't, yeah, just, just pull it. How's that? Uh, the name of my poem is called Irilonan. Uh, Irilonan is an Iroquois word uh, meaning long tail. Um, it's also one of many spellings uh, for the uh, Erie Nation people. Irilonan. Backs ridged with snow, deer walk through Erie straw smoke. They're home through heritage, moist air exacerbates the heaviness, foraging, wanting without thought, shortened winter, early spring. These are the unspoken words of their gaze, seeking an existence before ribs rupture the already distort distorted hide. Having no sense of time, gnaw drives causation, instinctual hope for cessation. Eerie Lonan's wind curls birch bark, opening winter scab, creaking tree moans echo those who name the water long before these chafing ice flows, endless chopping chant roam these long tail shores. Thank you, JP. Next volunteer, Kevin Frederick Smith, come on up. Woo! Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. This poem is called Idiotic Idioms, and it is essentially what happens when you take a bunch of idioms and mash them together so that they make even less sense than they originally did. <laughs> now, I may not be the sharpest needle in the haystack, but I'm not barking up the wrong elephant in the room when I give you this advice. When life gives you lemons, kill two birds with a grain of salt. <laughs> After all, slow and steady wins the best thing since sliced eggs in one basket. <laughs> it ain't over till the fat lady cries over a baby's bottom, but that's the pot calling the kettle greener on the other side. I guess the cat's out of the closet, but you can't judge a book by everything but the kitchen sink. I may have bitten off more than I can shake an arm and a leg at here, but it takes two to jump on the bandwagon through the grapevine, so let's not beat around the whole nine yards between a rock and a hard piece of cake. But before I go, allow me to share one final piece of wisdom. Once in a blue goose chase, every dog has his silver lining when pigs fly. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Whoever's next is next. Volunteer. I see people scratching heads. I'm going to start calling out from the book. How many people are you having this? That's all for the volunteers. I'm going to start alphabetically, work my way from the beginning to the end. Are you raising your hand over here? Come on up. Okay. Uh, 
The subject of my poem is um, someone I wasn't aware of for a long time, even though I like whales and have for years. Um, North, Atlantic, North Atlantic right whale. Spotted it immediately, finely carved from bamboo root, grace caught in motion. Tag said, northern right whale. Picked it up, could not put it down. So thoroughly charmed I was by the carver's simple rendering, the revealed essence of one of Earth's greatest beings. Carried my new friend through the store, through checkout, and all the way home. Months later, Sierra Club reports continuing threats on northern Atlantic right whales. Less than 450 right whales remain worldwide. And I just wanted to add a little bit that um, this was, this was yeah. written a while ago, but every uh, once in a while I hear a new threat to right whales. Um, now it's because of the warming ocean. Uh, there are more lobster and much more lobster fishing up near Maine and therefore the right whales are getting caught in um, lines that hold the traps. So um, first it was, they were great oil for oil lamps, and then it was the um, sound from um, testing in the waters. So um, we won't, our grandkids probably won't be around to see one. Thank you, Jill. Volunteers. Renee Sanders, come on up. Before Renee goes, I would like to remind everyone that the people up here on the stage are pouring their hearts out to you, so please try to show some respect by not conversing while they're performing. Thanks. I want to take you all back to the winter. Remember those winter gray days we had? That's good. Yeah. Just, just momentarily. We won't go there long. This is fashion of the day. She was the Audrey Hepburn of winter days. Fashionably adorned in black and white. Classic. A snowy sweater dropped upon her shoulders in contrast to the ebony morning crisp chemise. Glistening pearls dropped lightly, accessorizing the afternoon classic. As the day grays, she dons her formal wear, velvet black gown. Her pearls are traded for starry diamonds dropped upon the sleek landscape. Her, her lobes are, are adorned with icy prisms. Her limbs are adorned with evening gloves. Elegant. Audrey smiles demurely, hinting at the dawn of style. Thank you much, Renee. Who's next? Mary Trezillo, everyone. babies, which is short stories. But I'm here to read you a poem, and it's a poem about Cleveland. It's a poem about going to Stanford, seeing the Rodin collection. Don't mention you're from Cleveland. 
<laughs> Among the agonies of Stanford's Rodin Garden, twisted humans, she was the, the she who was the beautiful, the burgers, disheveled, Balzac. I quiver with empathy and remember our thinker. A thousand miles away, his lovely Rodin feet blasted, his thighs tortured metal. Reba, that night I heard the forever re-sculpting boom. Observe Stanford's thinker, whole, healthy, at Meyer Library's door, also topping their gates of hell, this university not being really intimate with hell. The docent offers slick brochures. Stanford's wealth worships Rodin's stone ardor, lost wax frozen in bronze for human passion. I wander, nod sympathy to Camille Claudel, drink fatigue, despair, the caryatids, torment more ardent in one-way conversation. They have one answer for saying for all. I murmur, some fool blew up our thinker's feet. Attack. Your handbag. What? No bags in the galleries. I offer it to search. But no, the handbag and I must go because Rodin too deeply touched the man who blew the thinker up. Knowing he answered Rodin's agony, they thought that I might too simply do the same. Thank you much, Mary. Next volunteer. Next. No. All right, Aisha Smith, are you here? Alyssa Smith. Bethany Pope is not. Brian Taylor, I don't see you, but are you here? No. Uh, Caitlin Blair Kogar. No. Casey's not here. Christina's not here. Clarissa Jacobson's. No. Barry's not here, dude. Emily Reed Green. No. Frank's not here. Jacob's not here. J.M. Romick, I don't see him. Okay. Joe Masisha. I don't think he's here. Well, let's bring up Julie Ursa Marchand. which means I'm going to be popping up here. So, Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. How's it going out there? Great. Good. Yeah, we had a lot of fun trying to find a place to park, so I we're here. I <laughs> had no idea Euclid was so ripped up, but anyway. Well, I know the Hustler Street Fair is a wonderful, like, yay, summer's finally here event, but I submitted a winter poem. <laughs> so... And it was the first poem I wrote this year, sadly so far the only poem I wrote this year, but here we go. It's called, At the Dawning of a Winter's Day, January 3rd, 2018. The sound of the snow breaking beneath my feet echoes through the trees. The warm feeling from my bed quickly leaves my cheeks in the stinging cold. I don't even hear the birds or squirrels stirring on this frigid pre-dawn morning. My little dog shivers as she sniffs the ground, looking for that sweet spot to go. It's too cold for her to track where the rabbits have been and are burrowed. The sky is slowly changing from bluish gray to rose in the east while the waning moon makes its descent in the west, in the west coaxing the stars still shimmering overhead to follow its lead. The days are just becoming noticeably longer juxtaposed by the sun and the moon and the sky at the same time. I draw in an icy breath and dream of the January thaw. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Julie. Any other volunteers? 
Sorry, I didn't say Juliet. Next page. Keeley's not here. Leonard's not here. Lorianne Kusterbeck, I didn't see you either. Nope. Uh, Lorraine's not here. Lynn Shaco. Nope. Okay. Mark Mannheimer's not. Mark Jordan's not. Matthew Scott Harris. Nope. Uh, MJR Kimberly's not here. Ralph Pittman. Nope. Roger Craig. No. Skylar Bruce. like to read along as well or read this poem later in on page 51. Return to Eden. You are not going to hell. You're not going to hell. Nobody is and definitely not you. The capital C church tried to sell our souls back to us as frightened puppets. Each of us paying over and over. But their scam has run its course. We know the good news in each cell of our bodies. It has nothing to do with blood washing or obedience to a highly variable code. God has hidden God's self in the last place many would think to look, inside of us. Original sin lied to us, constructed a torturous narrative, and convinced most people to live fear into existence. But the mystics knew. The mystics recognized the face of God in each of us. They saw through the illusion that holy and human are separate, when in fact, we never stopped being love. The, the, the institution used words like heretic, false prophet, witch, and sinner to condemn those they could not control. But we are love, and we are not going to hell. We are the embodiment of the divine, each of us, whether we feel empowered or not. Sin is not doing bad things. It's any perception that separates us from knowing that God is in us and we are in God. We are love. They said that Jesus is fully human and fully divine. What they left out is, so are we. There is no angry God who must be appeased by a sacrifice to the death. There is only the spirit who longs for each one to know our true intended nature. We are not going to hell. We may create a hell for each other, but we also have the power to know each other. The divine in me recognizes the divine in you. How absurd that this notion seems Eastern instead of native to everywhere. So no, sweetheart, you are not going to hell. You cannot lose God's love because it is not conditional, no matter what they said. Now go and be love, because love is who you are. Come on up, Tam. Woo! Hello. Hello. This is a piece of flash fiction. And it's called Go to Cola. Callous fingers tucked back gray hair before settling on the Ouija board. Just home from his three-month tour, he sat at a small wooden table in a room lit by firelight. Reflecting on his travels, he realized how much he loved playing music and entertaining his fans. 
but how tired he was of staying in hotel rooms and having no time alone, and how much he missed his gardens and being with his most beloved Lola. He breathed in and out deeply, like he did before every concert, and then he posed the question to Luigi, how long will I have to keep playing to survive? His guitar shadow covered him in darkness. The heart-shaped guide floated across the board, circling the number four. Then it slid to the E, V, and R. He whispered aloud his answer, four, E, V, R, forever? A guttural noise escaped his throat the sound of a wounded wildcat. His fingers slammed down on the plastic heart, flipping it over. His eyes widened. The shadow of his Stetson hat wavered on the ceiling. He resignedly turned the heart back over, placed his fingers evenly on his answer giver, and inquired clearly, how? The device slid across the board in darkness. Then it slipped into the light, stopping at, flowing to, pausing in between the following letters. G-O-T-U-K-O-L-A. Go to Cola. He stared from Luigi to the scribbles on his notepad, taking note of the line he made beneath the letter K. He stared at the fire. The shadow of his boots danced on his heart. He walked outside, barefoot, down his path. Then he stopped, for there Lola stood, unadorned, waiting to embrace him. When he entered her, he closed his eyes as she wrapped him with her warmness, her herbal, hot aroma. Although vulnerable, tall glass walls, she was his haven. When he opened up his eyes, he spied the most beautiful flora in an eight-inch green plastic pot. Just to sprout three months ago, the gift his son had given him before he went on tour had turned into hardy, wide, heart-shaped leaves. He read the white plastic tag for the first time directions. Plant in greenhouse conditions and excellently drained soil. Medicinal benefits. Used for fatigue, anxiety, depression. Helps improve memory and intelligence. He flipped the tag over and read its name. Centella Asiatica, commonly known as go to cola. He breathed in and out deeply just as he did after every arm pull, just as he did after every closing bow, and he smiled, knowing now. Thank you. I'm going to skip Tanya for a second, because she won within the last few years. Valentina Ronaldo Adams. And one of the more Clevenger is also not here. So that is all your competitors. Please clap. I would like to invite the judges to take Suzanne to this little back room back here, make your decisions, and she will inform me of the completed decision. In the meantime, I will read a couple pieces, say a couple things about writing nights, and if we run out of things to say, we'll just sit here in silence. <laughs> <laughs> or we could just do an open mic until they get back. Oh yeah, we could do that. <laughs> well, because I am, I am shamelessly promoting writing nights at the moment. Woo! On June 8th, nice. downtown Canton, on the second Friday of every month, writing nights, well, I mean, there's only one June 8th per year, but you know what I mean. <laughs> At uh, 135 6th Street Northwest, which is currently called the local but may change 
soon, we are going to have three features, right? Bill Abbott, poet, organizer, author, Rust Belt founder, cool dude. It's awesome. <laughs> Lorraine Cipriano is a glittery haikuist who delivers sparkly and shades of angst. Oh. And Eris Edie, a Woo! black bisexual badass poet from Cleveland. So everyone come check that out. We have a suggested donation of five dollars or ten used books because Writing Nights is putting together a used bookstore. For people who enjoy competing in things that involve words, the Grand Tournament 2018 deadline is coming up soon on June 2nd. I can give you more information about that, but if you go to writingnights.com, you can find the website if you go under a Grand Tournament 2018. Oh. When's the um, show? The actual show is the 27th and 28th of July. Uh, and the 27th, it'll be from 7 to 9, that'll be the first round of things, and then uh, rounds three through the finals will be on the 28th. There will also be vendors. Uh, right now we have a book vendor and an essential oils vendor, and we're working on some uh, food vendors. So the whole day is going to be kind of uh, fun. Community-centric. Community, yeah, we're trying community-centric, also trying to bring in poets and performers from all over as far as we can get them from because having that kind of diversity and makes... And visual artists with cover art. And visual artists with cover art, hopefully. We're waiting for them to sign up. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna, there's a couple in here that I really liked. Um, this one is by Leonard Lund. If you have a book, it's on page 32. Uh, it's called Rose of Jericho. I live with a woman who has earth in her hair. We walk the land together often, searching, seeking seeds and seedlings to take away to take back as green bricks for the future we have promised to leave the children. I toil with a woman who has skis in her hair, long locks tangled by the breeze that sings while we blacken our hands during the, turning the soil as we sweat above the fire, boiling to be soup in sunsets, changing air to orange and rose. I swim with a woman who has ocean salts and fresh water in her hair, who calls fish to come and feed the ones we shelter. In the evening, she bathes with me, and the river's laughter cleanses us. I love with a woman who has fire in her hair, auburn tresses burning and age smoked as she closes the long day in my arms, as we carry each other forward in dreams, as she calls me to dance with her at dawn. Our lives are elementary, our life an amalgam of wishes whispered sweetly in an ear, hopes balancing fears with the aid of strength that is the sun of more than parts and partings. This is what romance becomes in the apocalypse. Mm. <laughs> All right, Lori didn't come, did she? I didn't see Lori. Okay, so I really liked uh, Lori's. It's on the next page, page 32. Called Childbirth versus Creative Birth. And I realize it's weird for a male to say it, but it's fine. <laughs> it is born, this thing we have brought to life. Ten fingers, ten toes, ten stanzas, each perfect in its own way. It was a process, a development, one gestated, one ruminated for weeks, months. Figuring out its name, its theme, its purpose, putting that human perspective on it, that everything is special. Then, it is thrust out into the world, onto blankets, paper, digitized, recorded, time, date, place of birth, length of labor, exhaustive, in tears, overjoyed, this thing now actualized. What is it? What labels do we now place upon it? Gender, genre. Too thin, too thick, too short, too fat, too long. Perfect for this, not right for that. Something only a parent, only an author could love. When it is over, the aftermath, the afterbirth, leaves the body exhausted, drained, and then a flood of relief, jubilation, pride. Your new bundle of joy is here. Finished? No. No? Okay. 
Um, okay, so this one is by Lorraine Cipriani, who has a book coming out, the book, The Good, The Bad, Lorraine. We'll hopefully have it out by June 8th when she features with us. So if you like this poem, or if you like Lorraine and you know her, because like, to know Lorraine is to like Lorraine. This is called Summer Stained. It's on page 35. Catching a glimpse of bright pink sneakers, saw you walking your Toledo walk, laughing until we were no longer strangers, quenching the surprise in, your, in our eyes as we realized that our souls had met before. Your hands speak of shaping me, your stories painted with romance and fear in the wake of something brand new, bathing each other in whirling pools of energy, love exploding like purple stars, shrapnel traveling at a million miles per hour, there isn't much in space to stop it. Our tapestry dwarfed by the magnitude of interstellar space like a single-celled organism, by the vastness of the ocean in which it floats. Malibu beach waves crashed at our feet with dreams of togetherness so real, knowing that for now it is summer stained. We'll do one more, and then if we have people who want to do random pieces up here, let's keep them short and, and short. And one. <laughs> this one is uh, called This Is You by Mark Mannheimer on page 37. Why are brushing your air conditioner filter into the bathtub, wearing jean shorts and an old Devo album shirt, bulging prominently at the gut? Singing along with Jules Pan's million, millennial album in such ser terrible falsetto, middle-aged white male fat belly cool. No Tom Cruise risky business, sexy met teen swoon slick sick alien science. Singing Bob Seger in his underwear on the blockbuster screen. This is you, man. This is passion. This is real. Halfway to the grave and Friday night dreaming. Laundry in the washer. Burning the midnight candle. And a weekend full of recovery meetings ahead. <laughs> Do we have anyone who wants to share a random open mic piece? Go ahead, Cy. I don't know. Who are you? Oh, I don't know you. Sorry. Come on up, random person. Cy, you're next. So my name is Jennifer, and I'm here randomly. I didn't submit anything to this book. Um, but I actually have a short Instagram poetry page, so I'll just read from that. Um, with my digitally monitored, adjusted heart and my broken, adjusted body, with my privates on hold like an electric device, I surface onto you and my body becomes tight. My feet clench up and my hands touch my heart, and I have no desire to go any further than my breast. Speaking of new people, if you are a new people and you would like to be uh, involved with the Red Man's newsletter to get information about the shows we do or the calls we have out, um, come talk to me after the show. I don't have any cards with me at the moment. I'm a very bad host today. Um, all right, so let's welcome up Scott. Cy. This is called. This is a poem, and I'm gonna decide if it's a po that it's a poem for reasons of plausible deniability. <laughs> it was approximately 17 minutes since I last texted you when I first came to the realization that, to my delight, this would be one of the good highs. You know, where everything you see and hear and think is just about the coolest thing ever, and you forget about everything that isn't hopeful. After texting you, I saw my phone background image and realized I wanted to change it, but it is a new phone and has a limited stockpile of photos, only a few of which had you in them. I stared forever at one that I took last night, the one with the feet and the fingers and your upper lip flaring just the way it does sometimes. I stared forever at that photo and felt a flaring in my clock, which I which is what I have just decided to call my clip cock, which may retroactively explain my fascination with time. 
It was exactly 27 minutes since I smoked, which I only remember because the minutes had synced with a vastly overdone numerical joke that hilariously presaged my chosen activity, that is to say, it was 447. It was 4.50 when I checked my watch, my most prized material possession besides those which are indeed more prized. Simultaneously while crossing the threshold of the kitchen, which, through which I must always travel when moving between the living room and the bathroom. It was then that I remembered several deeply profound truths. One, that I had freshly cut peaches in the fridge. And by peaches, I mean some sweet and hairless pitted fruit which, whose name I can never sort out from the others, and so I call them all peaches. <laughs> Two, that these so-called peaches had been freshly cut a mere hour ago by a very kind and considerate and forward-thinking past self who conceived, or perhaps indeed perceived, that a very real and deserving future self would experience such much pleasure and satisfaction by eating something freshly cut and deep pitted that may as well by now be called a peach. <laughs> Three, that this future stel self still awaiting their peaches would experience that pleasure in far greater intensity if they were unburdened by the pressures of a full bladder. And so a plan formed and was carried out. By the time the plan came to full fruition, it had been 49 minutes since I last texted you, and while you, had, you still had not texted back, I had no fear that you had forgotten me, for I had remembered myself. And so, my love, I have this to say. The peaches are delicious, even though I know in my heart they are not actually peaches. I hope to taste them on your lips, because then I will know that you have known their pleasures as well. Thank you. All right, we have our results. Yes, Mary? Oh, we have our results. You'll, you'll be okay in a second. All right, can you have everybody who competed tonight come up on stage because I'd like a group picture if possible. My phone is right here if someone prob probably Skylar, no, that Skylar can't. Gloria. Um. Oh. Okay. All right. Um. Try landscape mode. Okay. How do I get and to so the camera? And so we get everybody in here. Um. Okay. I. I'm not sure. Okay. I think that's the camera. Did you find it? No. Is it? Slate to unlock. Okay. That's what I mean. It's like that I'm trying everything. to find the camera. <laughs> um, feel free to guide us all to the Ooh, center. Okay. Make sure we're all. Make sure we're all in the big center. All right. Can we? Can we see everyone? And I will move out of the way once you can get everybody in there. Somebody should take a loan. We got everybody in the shot? If everyone who took pictures did send those to me, I would appreciate it. Thank you. All right, everybody, stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Don't leave. You can stand up, though. I, if I can't be comfortable on the floor. All right. Do we have any other announcements? Anyone want to make an announcement up here? Anybody got books coming out? I wanted to mention that tomorrow is my 35th birthday. And but that's not why I'm mentioning it. I'm mentioning it because I'm doing one of those donate your birthday on Facebook things. So I am the only Skylark Bruce on Facebook. Go find my very most recent public post about donating to the Lhasa Sanctuary, which is a place where farmed animals get to live out their lives in peace. Um, they're near Ashtabula, and I actually found out about them at the House of Street Fair a few years ago. So go, make, go don donate whatever dollars you can. They would be very much appreciative. Thank you. And of course, now we're going to sing Happy Birthday to Skylark. Ready? 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Skylark. Happy birthday to you. Now I immediately feel that. Does anyone else have a birthday out there today? Tomorrow? Well, so sure. So happy birthday also to Woo! Rachel's mom, Gail. Rachel's mom, Gail. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not going to make the same voice. I'm sorry. I should have asked before. Anyone else? Happy mine birthday was, to anyone else? Mine was yesterday. Happy birthday yesterday to everyone. Any other announcements? Any book releases coming out? Anybody? Plays? Tap dancing? Cool. All right. The moment we've all been waiting for. Drum roll, anyone? Everyone? In third place, winner of the $25 prize, Mary Terzillo. <laughs> if you could take pictures of this, can you hand in her the envelope? That'd be great. Cool. Good. All right. Also, uh, people who are winning these prizes are um, also eligible to read at the Hessler Street Fair, either the second or the third. I, I never know when they put them in. A third. Usually. Second place. Drum roll. You know the rules. Ross Martin Hayes! Welcome to your team. Oh, Kitty! I think they might know each other, guys. Just met today. It's almost been a year, hasn't it? But they, they just got married like within a year. I think. August. 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 So. Yeah. Yes. Keeping count. I love it. The winner of the one hundred dollar prize. Cy Castello. <laughs> and I didn't expect it, but still thanks. Awesome. One big round of applause for everybody who competed. Yeah. Round of applause to our judges, to Max Bax, to Happy Dog, to Random Open Micers, to the Hessler Street Fair, and to Poetry Itself. Thank you all, and let's, let's schmooze, man. Thank you. <laughs> you were a unanimous first pick. What? Yeah. I am not kidding. What? I am not kidding. You were the first person we were able to agree on. Yeah. Sorry, say again? First, first easy pick, first pick, first time. We were the, yeah, we, we immediately all agreed on side. <laughs> so it's like, you know, yeah, you know, this whole, I, 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 I don't know. I don't even know why I'm here. We, we, we're good, we're good. People respect that. Maybe I should keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for judging. Yeah, here's your phone. It's still camera mode. So. Okay, and I need to do what now? Finish? Do I hit finish? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I really like 